Jesus of the living God, the Savior, lives in us. And if the Savior lives in us, then we are Superman to our world. When you look around the world today, you discover that everything you see is as the result of the decisions people make on daily basis. Every positive thing as well as every negative thing. The killing, the stealing, the destruction we see in today's society are the decisions people make as well as the building, the establishing, the development. Whatever thing you find today in today's society is the result of the decisions we take as people because we as man was granted, we were given that freedom to make decisions. So as Christians, you have to decide what decision you make today. If you allow Jesus to assist you in your decision making, you will find yourself making decisions that positively impacts the society of which you are also a part of. You just find yourself making positive impact in the world. And when you find yourself making negative decisions that bring you to the point of failure, you just have to look at it as a lesson. You find people today trying to cast and bind the evil spirit in their lives but as a Christian, you can't possibly pray against what came to teach you a lesson. When you make negative decisions that put you in your current situation, you simply have to learn from it. And that challenge will fade naturally. This will lead me to the title of today's message. Life, a high school of learning. We'll take our reading from Genesis 37, from verses 5 to 11, and also from verses 23 to 24. Verse 5. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Verse 6. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. Verse 7. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Verse 8. Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Verse 9. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. He said, listen, I had another dream and this time the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. Verse 10. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him. Hear this word and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you. Verse 11, his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in heart. When you read this through to verse 23, you will discover a whole lot. Verse 23, when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing. Verse 24, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. When you read this, you see clearly that Joseph was not yet mature and he kept on revealing the plans God had for him to people. He was too young to appreciate the glory that lay ahead of him. If not, he would not have ordinarily gone to people and start revealing his future plans to them. If that young man, Joseph, were to have been the prime minister early than the time he did in Egypt, he would have lost all. Joseph would have been too inexperienced to handle that position. He needed to learn. So the hard time Joseph faced, he went into the dry pit, into Potiphar's house, and finally in the prison 
This was God's way of preserving him for the glory of God. The challenges we face are not our enemy. They are there to strengthen us. They are there to improve us. This is God's way of grooming us for tomorrow. It was during that period of his life that Joseph gained the necessary experience and maturity he needed to handle the responsibilities imposed by the exalted position in the royal court of Egypt. It was during these hard times Joseph gained the maturity and experience he needed to rule. No pain, no gain, no suffering, no success. No persecution, no promotion. When you ask people who have attained success in today's society, they will tell you how much they suffered. They will tell you the challenges they went through. It did not come easy before they could get to the position they are. Those hard times were necessary. The challenges we go through as Christians are necessary. Ask any successful person in Christ Jesus. Ask Prophet T.B. Joshua and he will tell you how much humiliation, how much hardship, how much disappointment, disagreement, persecution and rejection he had to endure before coming to a new level in life. You find people looking in today's society and admiring great men, powerful people in today's society. But how many people, how many of them admire the challenges they went through before ascending the throne? How many of them would want to go through those challenges these great men faced or passed through before they got to a new level in life? Successful people don't just drift to the top. It takes focused action, personal discipline, and a lot of energy every day to make things happen. In other words, we should be happy whenever we go through challenges as Christians because this is a preparation. We are being prepared by God for destiny. If not, you will crash and explode before you get to your place of destiny. There is benefit in failure. And as a child of God, you should be grateful for your challenges. If not for the challenges we go through, we will not be where we are today. Because challenges forces us to look deeper as children of God in what? And we, we explore possibilities. We also pray and dream of other ways we might have ignored. Meaning, challenges will force you to become a better version of yourself because personal improvement and fulfillment in life will definitely come through a continuous process of learning from both positive and negative experiences. There's no shortcut to spiritual maturity just as there's no shortcut to success. Many people want to ascend to the throne without challenges. It is impossible. You will find yourself returning back to square one. You must learn the lessons. As long as we are living, we will continue to learn. Great men and apostles of old did not neglect human means when seeking the necessities of life. As a child of God, we will continue to learn through the daily challenges that happens around us. Because life is a high school of learning where the necessary truths are imbibed. That is, life is like an institution of God. And in this college or institution of heaven, no matter how intelligent or brilliant you think you are, you will definitely not be given a double promotion. You will face it. You will face each challenges because each of them are there to teach you a lesson. You find yourself learning through life. You find yourself improving the mistakes you made before. You find yourself not repeating it. This is success. There is no success without failure. There is no promotion without persecution. There is no gain without pain. As one who will become successful in life, you need, just like Joseph, to be prepared in different areas. He needed to know how to tame his tongue. He needed to know how to contain his mind. 
He needed to know how to handle people because not everybody around you or that knows you or came to you will follow you to the throne. So many people will leave you. So many people will abandon you. So many people will hurt you. So many people. These are the people that come and profess love for God. These are people that come to you and profess affinity with God. This you definitely have to learn from. So if those challenges don't come, you won't know who is true and who is bad. You won't know the character of people. So you need to learn through the daily things that happen to you. You can't just automatically be in the truth without facing these challenges that God brings to life. You will be too inexperienced, too immature to handle that glorious future that God has for you. Like Joseph, the place where your throne may be situated may not be in your father's house. It may not be in the country of your bed. Neither will it be in your continent. But it will definitely be where God has appointed you to be. So you should accept these challenges. You should be grateful to them. Because if not for the challenges you encounter, you will not be able to attain greater height. You will not come to the throne. If you do not learn what it takes to be in need, how would you appreciate wealth when it comes? And how would you take care of the less privileged? If you don't know what it takes for you to fail, how would you appreciate success when it comes? And how would you inspire people? If you do not learn what it takes to be sick, how can you appreciate good health when it comes? Or how can you appreciate God? How would you know how to take care of the sick? If you don't know what it takes to be disappointed when you go through life, you find yourself being disappointed in life. If you don't know what it takes for you to be disappointed, how would you keep promises when you are finally blessed? If you don't know what it means to be called names, to be humiliated, how would you appreciate honor and glory? when it comes and how would you know how to help those that are humiliated in this world if you don't know what it means to be hated how would you appreciate life and the praises of people when you are finally loved and appreciated with all this you would agree with me that challenges is not our enemy but friend because all challenges does is to take us to our place of destiny our God is powerful and God can use challenges to direct us. He can use challenges to put us and make us sit up, to put us through, to place us on the right direction. If not for the challenges man is facing, if not for the challenges we are facing on a daily basis, we would not ordinarily move closer to God. So if our challenges is making us pray the more, fast the more, and move closer to God the more in a powerful way that elevates our spiritual status, then tell me how these challenges is our enemy. How are these challenges our enemy? Because challenges is Satan. If Satan and what he does, his activities, make us to pray the more, fast the more, move closer to God the more, how is Satan our enemy because all Satan does through these challenges is geared towards the accomplishment of God's purpose in our life. It is geared towards achieving destiny. So challenges, Satan is also a potential instrument in the hands of God to build us. When you hear someone lying at you, when you hear people doing you bad, you hear people, you find yourself in a position where people say lie where people persecute you are the one growing these challenges is what mature us as christians it reveals the character and the nature of those around us satan has never been in the position of growth he is the instrument that god uses to build his people this means that god uses challenges sometimes to draw us closer to himself so that we can be rightly positioned in destiny. 
what we go through is here to prepare us for the future. It is to preserve us for destiny. Sometimes when God knows that this location you are going to would result in death, He may allow you to go through challenges that will prevent you from reaching that place. We see it as challenges, but with this, we now know that this is the hand of God. If only we know what God is saving us from, if only we know what God is saving us from, we will appreciate challenges. We will appreciate what we are going through. Because if these negative people and people, deceptive people around you don't leave you early enough, you find yourself when you get to that place of destiny, your life may be cut short. When you get to your destination, because the nature of those around you have not been revealed, you find yourself losing all. So the rejection, the disappointment, may be God's way of preserving your life so that you can enjoy that dividend of one who has reached destiny. Because once the evil days are over, God will bless you with so much that you can never imagine. We all remember the challenges Job went through in the Bible. While he was going through those challenges, a lot happened to him. But at the end, Job was blessed much more than he can ever think of. The ways of God are not the ways of man. To be delayed is not to be denied. This means when your miracles are being delayed, you should know that you are about to receive a mother of miracles. When you are going through challenges and the blessings are not coming, you know that when these challenging days are over, you will be blessed beyond your expectation. As children of God, we don't pray against what came to teach us a lesson. We simply have to learn that lesson and that challenge will fade naturally. Imagine Job casting and binding the devil. No matter the prayer, it would not go simply because God was behind it. Our attacks as children of God are not like others. We face challenges because we must learn what it takes to grow. We must learn what it takes to improve. Whenever you face challenges as a Christian, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. See what you are going through as God's way of building you. When you see what you are going through as God's way of building you, you will not complain. You will not lament. Neither will you murmur because this is the hand of God. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have casted, you have pined and this situation remains. This is the hand of God. You simply learn the lessons and that challenge will fail naturally. Thank you.